your wife is a wonderful woman. At least that's the person you are fighting to keep. And you can't and don't want to imagine your life without her. I mean, what would that even look like? No more dinner together? No more watching your favorite TV shows? Cuddling together? Kissing? Showers? Sex? Look, you know this woman. Or at least you thought you did. Because she's been acting like someone completely different lately. And a part of you just wants to shake her by the shoulders and say, Honey, like we can work on this. Why the hell are you being so damn stubborn? I am sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. But her mind is made up. She's been mad and threatened to leave before, and she says she hasn't been happy, but this time, this time, it's different. Is there a chance to even save it? To win your wife back? An even better question, do you need her help in the process? Or can you save your marriage by yourself? When it comes to saving your marriage and winning back those perfect days with her, the only way you can truly lose her is to give up. And I would say the number one thing that causes men to actually give up is losing hope. And then the biggest misconception causing hope to slowly fade away is the belief that a man needs his wife on board with her to win her back. However, with the hundreds of marriages we've saved, not one man had his wife buy in when they first sought out our help. Let that sink in, play it back if you have to. So how did those guys save their marriage? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you five unique methods that you won't find in relationship books or anywhere else that I've seen to save your marriage all by yourself. This first method is gonna be a little counterintuitive, but stick with me. The ancient Stoics in Greece practice something called negative visualization. What they would essentially do is they would sit down and think about all the things that they could lose that they love. They imagine their arms being chopped off, all of their family members dying. They imagine losing all their wealth, the worst possible things you can imagine. Now, why do they do this? They did this because of attachment. The point is, is that if you can visualize already in your mind that you've lost her, that she's gone, you put yourself through that pain. Imagine what life would be like. And it is painful. It is hard. A lot of guys will never do this. What is the logical reason why you would? Well, the ancient Stoics believe that by completely imagining the worst possible things that could happen to you, by comparison, if it actually happens, it's not a big deal. You've already put yourself through that hell. You've already seen that you come out on the other side. So in those moments with her, because your neediness is one of the main things that's causing her to feel unsafe with you, that you can't be your own man. When you actually visualize losing her, or even worse, what will happen? In those moments, you're just a little bit more detached. I'm not gonna say this is perfect, but you are more detached and she feels that. You can give her that freedom that she needs. If she wants to go on a girl's trip, okay, sure. Now, don't get this confused with not caring at all. There's plenty of videos and topics that talk about this, but a lot of men struggle with neediness, right? That cajoling, that convincing, the, you know? By practicing this negative visualization, and putting yourself through that hell, you'll experience a little bit less of it in your actual life. This next one is the hardest one for all men to overcome because you literally have to overcome yourself. And to share this example and this powerful point with you, I'm gonna extend my own personal example with my relationship. Now, even though I am an expert in this field and I would argue one of the best in the world at what I do, of course I still struggle. I'm not perfect. Everyone out there struggles, right? And with my partner, oftentimes when she's upset and she's mad, she has her own, her own inner stuff that she has to deal with and she comes at me with a lot of anger, right? She goes in her masculine. And immediately, because I'm pretty intelligent and I know this stuff quite well, it's easy for me to rationalize, to defend, to take the words she is saying and logically dismantle and pull it apart, just like nitpick the words to feel superior to her, to put her below me. Now, this is a defense mechanism and it's all about my ego. See, in my ego, I am the therapist. I am the relationship expert. So whenever there's an issue, it can't be my fault. It has to be her. I hyper-focus on her insecurities, on the things that she needs to do more successfully. Like, well, if you know, if you came to me and you were just a little bit more calm or you shared your emotions with me, I wouldn't have to defend. I wouldn't have to go on the back foot. But you see the fundamental flaw here is that the masculine leads. And I can easily say, if you do this, then I will do that. But why can't you switch that and just say, if I was able to remain in my calm, centered, grounded masculine, despite her anger and I didn't shut down, I leaned in, I showed I genuinely cared. How often would that break the cycle? How often would that soften her? Now at times I am able to do that, but at times I'm not, whether it's stress or just whatever the case may be. And I know for a lot of men, the ego, right? That ego defense gets in the way, especially a lot of successful guys. Right, they'll lean back on like, look at this life I've created for you. Look at the roof of your head. We are on a trip right now on vacation and you're choosing to fight with me. Look at the kids I've Look at all the things I've done. Me, 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 me. Right. And when you focus so much on yourself, 
I know you're defending yourself because you feel attacked, but when you focus on yourself, what happens? She thinks to herself, he doesn't care. And at the end of the day, she picks up on that. And you could sit there and say until the freaking sun goes down that you do care. And you're gonna point out all these logical reasons why you care for all the financial support you've given or the times in the past. But in that moment, in that moment, you can't argue with her emotions, can you? They're her emotions. And at the end of the day, whether you feel attacked or not, I have whole videos discussing how to deal with boundaries, but whether you feel attacked or not, it doesn't matter. If you see that she's in pain and that's what you focus on, you're gonna show up for her and get your own needs out of the way for the temporary moment. And changing that pattern changes the whole relationship, okay? So I want you to be aware, the next time you're in conversation, notice if you feel attacked when you defend, when you use logic. Those are defense mechanisms of the ego to rationalize. You have a brilliant mind. You can rationalize pretty much anything and why she's wrong, but she can do the same. Okay. And if you want the pattern to change, you have to change. And the way you change is getting outside of yourself, literally changing your patterns and who you are. Otherwise the same pattern will repeat. Now let's go over the third method, which is CDA. Now that you don't fear rejection, you can move forward with what you want. Now you may know what cognitive dissonance affirmation is, but if you don't, let me share you Aesop's fable. Basically this fox came up to a tree, says, I want those grapes in the tree and then tried to climb, couldn't get him. And it said, owl, Hey, you're in the tree. Give me the grapes. The owl says, no. The fox says, you know what? Those grapes are probably sour anyways. So the definition of cognitive dissonance is the state of having inconsistent thoughts or beliefs or attitudes, especially as relating to behavioral decisions and attitude change. Okay, so how does this all relate to getting your wife back? Truth number one, getting back your wife all stems from proper action, correct? Truth two, your brain can't tell the difference between fantasy and reality. If you don't believe me, read Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz, plenty of studies. And then the third truth, in alignment with cognitive dissonance. If you see in your mind that 100% you have your wife back in your arms again, your brain has to reconcile that belief by acting the exact way you need to in this present moment to win her back. You've let go of neediness with negative visualization. You've got your ego out of the way and visualized her in your arms. So you're all done, right? Well, no, not really. I want to equip you with about two more tools that will facilitate the process of getting her back, making it a lot easier. The fourth method. Now I have a completely comprehensive guide on this method up here that you should watch after this video. But let me tell you about a man who passed this method or tests with flying colors. And before I do a test is a subconscious and embedded mechanism in her mind to ensure you are the competent caregiver she needs. Okay. That you are essentially good enough for her as a guy. You see a woman, all women can't ensure you have high value simply by looking at you and things can change and they want to make sure you're always that guy. So moment by moment, she will test you. And if you react, you lose and you lose attraction, you lose value in her mind. Now, when you begin to act different by seeing a future with her, what will happen? She will say, okay, this is too good to be true. So the most common things a wife will say is do it for the next woman. Or why did it take you so damn long to change for me? Or saying, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to go off on this girl's trip. She's going to do things to test your boundaries, to push you, to see if you cave back into the man that is not the guy that she doesn't want. Let me say that again for you. She will test you or do or say things to make it seem like you are not the man for her. And if you react, you prove her right. However, if you don't react, you prove her wrong, which is what she wants. All right. Now, again, there's a whole video. At the end of the screen, you could see on tests, but I just want you to know that this is going to happen and it is a good thing. With this last one, I oftentimes like to, I spend a lot of time just thinking about relationships, right? Your relationships, marriage, male, female dynamics. And there's this idea that you could take life and you give you life through certain filters or prisms, right? And one of the paradigms you can see life through is that life is simply a game. You know, money is just points, right? You're, there's these rules that are constructed. You have to follow them. There are winners, there are losers. And that is a paradigm you can see life. Life can also be suffering. Life can be all these different things. When it comes to relationships, this framework that I feel like is going to help you the most is that your marriage is a constant seduction. Now, what does it mean to seduce? A lot of people, when they hear the word seduce, they think pickup artist or like Casanova or sexual. Seduce simply means to attract. Okay. And across your relationship, because you're different people, you have just things change over time. There's just constant flux. You are going like this with your partner. Okay. Ideally, the times together will be longer than the times apart, but it's this constant dance and flow of feminine to masculine energy. Point being, what if for the moment you viewed this relationship with her and her struggles just as a seduction? When you first approach a high value woman, she's not going to be smiling and happy and just like all over you. And if she was, <laughs> you should think to yourself, why? So what are some of the things that happen early on in the dating phase? A woman will put resistances up, or at least she should. 
All right? She's not gonna make it easy for you. She's not gonna be all over you all the time. But something happens in a long-term relationship, especially a marriage, where it's like, well, she knows me, I know her. There doesn't have to be this dance where I have to overcome all these boundaries and these walls. Why is she making it so hard for me? She makes it hard for you because she wants to be desired. And desire doesn't simply mean, oh, I just want you in this random moment when I'm feeling passionate. No, desire means that you want to overcome those walls she puts up. The feminine wants to put up these walls to have you break through them, right? She wants you to break down that wall, that wall of ice that she's put up. She wants you to open her up, right? That is the process of seduction. That as a man, nothing gets in your way for how much you love her, how much you want her, how much you will be doing, willing to do anything to break her down in the best possible way. And a lesser man, and I get the feeling of just feeling exhausted behind this, but a lesser man does give up. And what does that confirm to her in her mind? Well, if he's not the guy, maybe someone else will. You see that? And so if you can view this right now, her making it hard for you as a fun seduction, a game. She said, oh, it's her little test. I know how to pass this test. I've watched Josh's channel. I'm gonna be unreactive. I'm gonna seduce her. And then when she opens up to you, she thanks you. And if you can fall in love with that game and get damn good at it, it becomes fun. Now, if you want to learn more of the rules of the game, there are plenty of videos on this channel, but one of the best ways to set up a call with our team down below if you're fully committed to have the marriage to restore it to where you want it to be, to have that thriving, beautiful, you get the point, okay? I'll see you in the next one.